What's up everyone, James here, and we are back with the conclusion of Godzilla vs. The Power Rangers 2, and it's incredible. Make sure you hit that like button, and let's get into it. So this picks up with the Psycho Rangers taking the fight to Godzilla and the Power Rangers. Remember, each one of them has been given the power of one of Godzilla's toughest foes. How exactly Rita and Astronema achieve this, we're going to learn in a second here. The Power Rangers and Goro quickly figure out that they are not winning this fight, because the Psycho Rangers are overwhelming them easily with their new beefed up powers. Now the Rangers of this universe are still alive. They contact the Prime Rangers from their severely damaged Dino Megazord. Now Rita watching this unfold is already celebrating the end of the Power Rangers. When she gloats that this is the final defeat of the Power Rangers and is her greatest victory, Astronema responds basically saying it's more like her victory since it's her Psycho Rangers doing all the work. Rita says it was my magic that merged multiversal focus energy with the Psycho Rangers Shadow Sword and it was my idea to use the sword to siphon energies from the monsters in Godzilla's universe. Now the sword Rita is referring to is actually called the Savage Sword in the Power Rangers universe. It first appeared in Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, my third favorite Power Rangers show, in the episode Power in Pink. The Galaxy Pink Ranger was the one who learned about the ancient weapon. However, the Psycho Pink Ranger found it and dominated both the Galaxy and the Space Pink Ranger. The sword had the ability to absorb energy from those it was used against. As Godzilla and the Rangers are continuing to be demolished by the Psycho Rangers, Rita notices Astronema isn't celebrating and asks her why since they seem to be on the edge of victory. Astronema answers, I don't believe in celebrating until the final death blow is struck. Green Ranger Tommy's Dragonzord seems like it's going to be the first to fall because Psycho Rangers Megalon and Space Godzilla are ripping through its armor. And so Goro communicates to the Rangers that Jet Jaguar's multiversal battery has recharged. He transports Godzilla and all the Power Rangers, including the ones of this universe, into the reality stream in order to escape the Psycho Rangers onslaught. To no surprise, Rita begins to freak out, but Astronema assures her the Psycho Rangers will hunt them. Once they all reach this new universe, Godzilla wanders off because he's pissed that he was getting beaten and because he doesn't view the Rangers Zords as threats anymore since they're all out of commission. After all the Rangers introduce themselves to each other, they begin to wonder where they are now. At that moment, they are greeted by the Elias, who informs them they're on Infin Island. Now the Elias are fairies who are sisters and priestesses that serve Mothra. Infin Island is Mothra's home. The Elias tell the rangers they reached out to Jet Jaguar and had him transport them here, because they know the fabric of reality is being threatened, and it is their sacred duty to help them. Kimberly says, we just need time to heal up. The Zords have already gone into self-repair mode. The Elias replies, we're afraid you're out of time. Suddenly, the Psycho Rangers appear. Psycho Red Ranger Destroya, god that's a mouthful, tells the Rangers to surrender the fragment of the multiversal focus they possess, and maybe they'll go easy on them. White Ranger Tommy points out that they have nothing to fight them with and can't jump to another reality yet until Jet Jaguar is recharged. The Elias respond, you're not alone. This is the domain of Queen Mothra. She and Godzilla, who didn't stray too far and once round two with the Psycho Rangers, both begin to battle them. Here's the problem though, they're outnumbered six to two. So though they're powerful, the Psycho Rangers have more firepower and they're not gonna last long. Luckily for them, Jet Jaguar is able to transport them all again. He transports them and the Elias to the Prime Rangers universe. Initially, the Prime Rangers are against this because it's leading the enemy right to their front doorstep. But Zordok points out that the Zords will repair rapidly now that they're back at the command center, and that the other Rangers of the alternate universe were in dire need of medical attention. The Elias revealed they had Jet Jaguar bring them here because they sensed Zordon's magic. The Rangers ask what's the plan, and what's happened to Godzilla and Mothra. Goro answers that Jet Jaguar put them in universes they would be safe. When it comes to the plan, Zordon answers, we must find a way to combat the Psycho Rangers. The Elias reply, this is why we've come here, to combine our magic with yours. Goro interjects, 
And let's not forget about my tech, because I've got an idea. There are many worlds and many monsters almost as powerful as Godzilla. Goro has Jet Jaguar travel the reality stream and siphon power from the monsters of Godzilla's universe that Rita hasn't taken. Jet Jaguar siphons energy from the fire demon Rodan, the armored dragon Anguirus, the god of the earth Baragon, the ancient guardian King Caesar, and the queen of the monsters Mothra. The power from these monsters combined with the Elisa sorcery and Zordon's wizardry has created new power coins. Zordon says these new power coins have come just in the nick of time because I'm picking up multiple enemy signals approaching the command center. We see Rita has sent an army of her monsters and putty patrollers along with astronomers Quantrons to attack the command center. Now you may have noticed the white and green ranger Tommy aren't here. When the rangers ask about them, the Elias answer they were sent on a mission. The rangers take their new power coins and Jason says, it's morphin time. They arrive in front of the command center with their new power and zords. The power rangers have become the kaiju rangers. It's going down son. The Kaiju Rangers begin to beat down Rita and Astronomer's army. This is definitely one of my favorite iterations of the Power Rangers because they are just awesome. The power they're displaying against this army is just absolutely incredible. Now them quickly taking out Putties and Quantrons isn't what's incredible because they both suck. What really makes this incredible is they're easily defeating Rita's monsters one after the other. Their new abilities are so awesome. Kimberly's arrows are explosive arrows. Zack can absorb attacks and redirect them back to his opponent. Jason literally becomes Rodan on the battlefield. He's just overwhelming huge numbers. And Billy and Trini are freaking super strong earthbenders. Now the mission White and Green Ranger Tommy and Jet Jaguar were sent on was to secretly board Astronomer Space Station and free the imprisoned Power Rangers from the different realities and their powers. They eventually find this tank where all the power coins are being held. Suddenly though, the White Ranger gets blasted from behind. Who enters the room is Goldar. I was actually beginning to wonder if we ever see Rita's right hand beast again. Unfortunately, that's the only one of her minions we're going to see in this series. We don't get an explanation as to what happened to Finster, Babu, or Squat. Goldar attacks Jet Jaguar, but remember, this robot is no slouch. It dodges his attack and drop kicks Goldar right in the face, breaking one of his teeth. This enrages Goldar and he slams Jet Jaguar into the ground. Now if you thought the Triple OG Rangers and not Tommy were getting a monster power up, you thought wrong. Because when White Ranger Tommy calls for backup, the Green Ranger shows up with the power of Godzilla and he's a beast. When Goldar clashes with the White Ranger and Jet Jaguar, the Green Ranger tells them to get clear. He then unleashes his atomic blast on Goldar. Literally one shots him and he's down for the count. I told you all this conclusion was going to be incredible. Returning to the Kaiju Rangers, they've wiped out most of Rita and Astronomer's army. They whip out the Kaiju Power Blaster and annihilate the remaining putties and Quantrons. Rita gets pissed and grows her remaining monsters on the battlefield, but the Kaiju Rangers aren't worried. Jason says, let's call some muscle of our own. We need the Kaiju Zords now. They come roaring onto the battlefield, and the Rangers dominate Rita's monsters. They didn't even need to form the Megazord, each one of them takes out a monster. Rita plans to send more of her monsters to the battlefield, and so Astronoma tells her she's taking over because she doesn't know what she's doing. When things are about to get ugly between these two, they're alerted to intruders on the space station. Astronoma storms off and says, why don't you sit this one out, Rita? I'll take care of the intruders and the rangers. I'll take care of everything. Meanwhile, White and Green Ranger Tommy and Jet Jaguar are trying to use what they can from the damaged computer system to locate the imprisoned rangers. At that moment, they hear the intruder alarms. Luckily, the White Ranger locates the imprisoned rangers, but Saba points out it won't be easy to reach them. They need a distraction. Green Ranger Tommy responds, leave it to me. 
if you need a distraction, I'll give you a Godzilla Zord sized one. He whips out what I guess we can call the Godzilla dagger, and he freaking summons the Godzilla Zord right on top of Astronomer Space Station. Like, holy hell. It starts demolishing the station. The Green Ranger makes himself a distraction while the White Ranger and Jet Jaguar save the alternate reality Rangers. Back on Earth, the Rangers are finishing off Rita's monsters. Suddenly, their scanners pick up the Psycho Ranger's energy signatures approaching. They end up forming the Kaiju Megazord. And this thing looks awesome. It's definitely up there with one of the best looking Zords. The Psycho Rangers arrive attacking the command center. The Kaiju Megazord battles them. Despite being outnumbered, the Power Rangers are holding their own against them. What's pretty cool is each of the Zords that make up the Kaiju Megazord has the same abilities the Rangers displayed on the battlefield earlier. The Rangers can each operate their part of the Zord and use their abilities independently. Now I can't remember if that's always been the case or when they come together they've always only been able to move as one. I don't pretend to be a Power Ranger expert. Honestly my knowledge goes from the 90s to early 2000s shows and the Power Ranger comics from Boom Studios. Comment below if any of you guys know. When Psycho Ranger Ghidorah unleashes a lightning blast on the Kaiju Megazord, Zack uses King Caesar's shield ability to protect it. Psycho Ranger Hedera grabs the Kaiju Megazord from behind. Now we're going to step away from that craziness for a moment and return to Astronomer Space Station, where Green Ranger Tommy is providing one hell of a distraction. He's blasting the station with an atomic blast. At the same time, Jet Jaguar is carrying all the imprisoned Rangers power coins while White Ranger Tommy is clearing the path in front of them, heading towards the Imprisoned Rangers location. However, they end up stopping in their tracks when they come face to face with Astronema, Rita, and their forces. The White Ranger tells Jet Jaguar to keep going while he holds them off. Meanwhile, the Power Rangers manage to break free from Psycho Ranger Hedera's grasp and beat back some of the Psycho Kaiju Rangers. Now we get to see yet another ability of the Kaiju Megazord. When Psycho Ranger Space Godzilla fires these ice crystal spikes at the Megazord, Kimberly uses her arrows to fire at them. However, the Rangers can't defend the Megazord from all angles. Psycho Ranger Destroya lands a blow. That's when the Rangers power up the Kaiju Power Sword and charge towards Space Godzilla. But their blow doesn't land because he has a force field protecting him. They end up surrounded by the Psycho Kaiju Rangers. What happens next is so good. White Ranger Tommy is holding his own against Rita, Astronema, and their forces. Eventually though, the two villainesses land some good hits on him. Rita says, you should have known better than to come here alone. The White Ranger replies, hate to disappoint you both, but I'm not alone. At that moment, Jet Jaguar shows up with an army of the imprisoned Power Rangers, morphed and ready to fight. Rita and Astronema, knowing that they have no chance of defeating all these Power Rangers, end up bailing out. The White Ranger tells Jet Jaguar to get them home, and that's where we head to next, to the Godzilla Zord, suddenly transported on Earth, crushing Psycho Ranger Destroya. Zordon and the Elias give every bit of energy they can to the Kaiju Megazord, so the Rangers can finish this fight. The Psycho Rangers are about to have a very bad day because they have to face the Tiger Zord, Kaiju Megazord, Godzilla Zord, and all the monsters the Rangers siphon energy from. They end up getting jumped. Each one of them gets taken out, and then they get finished off with an awesome Godzilla and Godzilla Zord atomic blast combo. The Psycho Kaiju Rangers are done, and the monster's energies that they siphon is released sending them back to their universes. Jet Jaguar sends the rest of the monsters, including Godzilla, into the reality stream, transporting them home. All the rangers celebrate the victory and the ending kind of moves pretty fast here. One thing I found interesting though, is White Ranger Tommy kind of hinting to Green Ranger Tommy his future. At least that's how I took it. When Green Ranger Tommy says, with so many rangers, it's hard to believe the universe could ever be in danger. The White Ranger replies, there are so many things you might find hard to believe, Tommy, and many surprises right around the corner. Another interesting thing that happens is this team of rangers whose identity is kept hidden from us approach Zordon and the Elias 
asking what will happen to their team, since Rita and Astronoma completely drain their power coins. The Elias and Zordon answer, your universe must be protected, and we have a great power to bestow upon you. The Kaiju power coins are yours. They morph and say, it's Kaiju time. Fast forward, Goldar and Rita are traveling underground somewhere, and she's pissed because she failed yet again. She says, once again, the Rangers made fools of us. They go back to their lives along with those monsters and their worlds unconquered. I relied on the wrong allies. Astronema couldn't pull her weight. I would have been better off siding with a partner as unpredictable and temperamental as Godzilla. The power of the multiversal fragment is still plentiful. My machinations are nowhere near their ending, and this time, I'll have allies I can count on. The Alliance of Ritas. We see all these Ritas from different realities surrounding a tank of the fragments of the multiversal focus Rita collected. You all know what that means, we're getting a trilogy. I am so excited because this second series was better than the last one. Until then, I know I said this at the end of the last series, I'm thinking of covering Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles versus the Power Rangers. Let me know if I should cover that. That's the end of the video. Hit that subscribe button. Help me reach 50,000 subscribers and follow the Go Beyond Comics podcast. Other than that, have an awesome day, everyone. And always remember every day to go beyond.